Quad 6.6. Six. All right, here we go. The big, big little motor test. Um, so this test, like the previous test, Carl Pablo did the hard work. He did the, uh, did the thrust testing, efficiency, and response um, testing. And I'm just coming in on the back end just to analyze the data. And the goal of this test, the, the reason for these motors is um, I really like this Gemfan 2512 prop for flying big in small spaces. So I don't have a huge space to fly in, but I like to fly, you know, with a good amount of power, nice control, and very responsive. And this prop finally kind of does it. Uh, for me, the three inch props are just a little bit overkill because to control that prop, I need a slightly bigger motor, a little bit more battery. And this gets me back down into the weight that I like to fly. So um, since I like to fly that, I figured it's worth investing to figure out which motors are going to be good motors, which ones to avoid, and um, this testing actually kind of proved that I can't just look at a motor and based on reputation or how a motor looks, pick a motor, because I picked a motor and it turned out to be a total dog. So the motor's in the test. Um, as kind of the old tried and true benchmark motor, we've got the AMAX 1103, that's a 7,500 kV motor. This motor was kind of popularized by Rugi and when he was doing his thing back in the 2.5 inch days. Um, we also got some newer motors like the Apex 1202.6 motor. This is 8,800 kV. Um, got a little known motor, the Bard motor, by developed by Dalton's 1103, 8,000 kV. Um, the Beta FPV motor. This motor is known, so this 1103 is known as the probably the least notchy motor ever created. Um, Mr. Shutterbug, Nate, he did a review on these, and that was like one of his comments, and it's true. These motors have like zero notchiness to them. And it's interesting because that actually plays a pretty big role in some of what we're seeing in the data. Um, one of my personal favorite motors as of late is this Brother Hobby 1103 motor. It's 8,000 kV. Unfortunately, this motor is not put out by Brother Hobby by itself anymore, so it's become a little unobtainian. You can get it through Avent Quads, but their only shipping option is 20 bucks. So you basically want to order a whole bunch of motors if you're going to order for them because that shipping is so high. Um, a motor that I did pick, so this is the Flywoo 1103 7600 kV motor. Um, I picked this motor because I was hoping it would reproduce the um, magic of the 1202.5 motor, and it did not, unfortunately. And we'll show you why. So, yeah, this is their version 2. Uh, it's, if you like golden blingy, it's a beautiful motor. The quality looks great, and it just doesn't perform. It's kind of interesting. Um, some of these motors are a little bigger, and we kind of left them out. So this Flywoo 1204, well... There's data on it, but I left it out of the analysis because it's just it just gets outside this size range. And we got the FPV cycle motor. This is that new 13 millimeter motor. Um, guess you know somewhere in a two to three. It's like a 1302 or 1303 range ish something. Uh, this particular motor that we have is actually a pre-production test motor. Um, so I'm not sure if it's exactly what went into production, but it's an interesting motor to talk about because it does things very differently than a lot of the other motors in this test. Uh, similarly, uh, test motor was the 1303. This this motor I left out is just a little bit too heavy. Um, another motor I left out, um, but I went kind of, so what we tried to do too is kind of go above and below the sweet spot to make sure that we were in the sweet spot. And so this motor, 1102, uh, 9,000 kV motor, so this is the motor I really loved back when I was flying the Presson, um, like the Hugh Cares, the, the King Kong little Presson 65 millimeter props. And uh, this motor works great with those, but this motor unfortunately just can't spin the gem fans well enough. Um, an interesting motor that I've never flown, but now that I see the thrust date, I'm like, hey, I kind of want to try these. So the Gep RC 1202, um, 8,000 kV motor. I thought it didn't have enough stator height, but um, I'll show you. It's actually kind of the new AMAX motor. I'll show you why. Uh, a motor that looked great on paper. I got them for three inch props, but turned out to be just a total terrible motor. It was this uh, gnarly FPV 1203 motor, 7000 kV. The unicorn motor, the happy model. This one, unfortunately, or for better or for worse, it's discontinued, but this is happy model does such interesting things where this motor performs so incredibly, yet it's such a terrible motor. Um, but this is a total unicorn in the testing. This is a 1203 motor, 11,000 kV, and we'll kind of get into why it's the unicorn of the bunch. Uh, kind of an inexpensive motor here, the HGLRC 1103, 8,000 kV. The Mamba, so this is one that kind of a lot of people commented overperforms. Um, and it's the testing data is like, yeah, kind of maybe, maybe not. Um, but this is the 1103, 8,500 kV motor. Um, Pyrodrone, so this was the old Hyperlite, the 1103, and this is actually 12,600 kV. Uh, this kV is just too high for 2S. 
Um, a bigger motor left it out of the analysis because it's just too heavy, the Power Drone 1303.5. Uh, similarly, the RCN Power 1204. Um, one of my cheater motors, this was the Sky Stars 1103-8000 kV motor. Um, this one used to actually be a pretty good choice because it was so light and performed well. It's a nice notchy motor. And it used to be super cheap, but now it's become less cheap and less available. So, um, may, And that's an issue because this motor is pretty fragile. So if you were to run it, you've got to be able to find it cheap because you've got to replace it, or at least pop the bells off and change out the bells. Um, and then two motors down here, which are really interesting um, because they are different geometry. It's the Jing motors. There's 1103 and there's a 1202, both 8,000 kV. And it's kind of interesting because um, similar construction, but different geometry. And despite the di different geometry, they basically made the same motor twice. And it's kind of interesting. But anyways, so diving into it. Um, first thing to talk about is the thrust. And like I discussed before in um, prior videos, you know, this is functional data where the difference down low at 20% throttle is different than the, um, the difference between the motors up high, 80% 80, uh, 80 throttle. And this changes as a function of throttle percent. And so this is kind of a complicated relationship. And so what we do to deal with that is use the technique called um, uh, functional per uh, principal component analysis. And what that allows us to do is take this complex relationship, this function, and summarize it down into one number. And um, I'll go ahead and run that for you and show you what those results were. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, just go back and look at the videos uh, that I did before that kind of describe this in more detail. But anyways, so when we take all those, all those um, thrust data, uh, we get the mean function. And then we see, for the most part, most of the difference in these motors is explained in the first principal component. A little bit more explained in the second and third, but most of it's really in the first. If we take a look at that um, first principal component, we can see it's basically a giant gain function. So it, um, it just describes how, so one number now describes how these motors are going to change and differ from each other as a function of throttle percent. And if we overlay the actual thrust curves, you can see that this um, principal component really does explain, really captures the majority of the difference um, between these motors. Out of curiosity, if we just look at the second uh, principal component to see what it is, you can see it's a very, very, very subtle sort of bias. So this is kind of the trade-off between power down low versus the trade-off versus power up high. Uh, for the most part, though, I, I didn't feel like we really need to add this in because the, the differences in thruster a little bit more for straightforward enough to be able to um, drop that out. So if we want to go ahead and um, use thrust and use that principal component, um, so now we can, we took that really complicated data and now that we have just that principal component score, we can just plot these and start, you know, picking some winners and losers out of these motors. Um, looking at this, so uh, when we look at the first principal component for the thrust, we see this is kind of our benchmark this AMAX motor. So things that are below this AMAX motor, I generally think are going to be just a little bit too low in the thrust to really make them nice and flyable like we want. And so the motors that basically we kind of have to drop out of further analysis, although we're going to still look at them, is this HGLRC motor 1103. That's just not going to have enough thrust, you know, compared to our benchmark that we liked. Um, similarly, this BARD motor and the Beta FPV motors. Um, other motors that are, you know, kind of uh, sort of borderline are kind of in here. And then some motors are producing a ton of thrust. So not surprisingly, this FPV cycle motor, it's a high KV and it's a big motor and it produces a giant whopping gob of thrust. Similarly, not too surprising, the Happy Model 1203 performs, you know, puts out a bunch of thrust. And then our hyper, hyper light motor, that 1103, so that hyper KV, that 12,600 KV, also produces a giant amount of thrust. And so that looks like, wow, look, this tiny motor is producing a giant amount of thrust. But then we have to ask the question, it's like, okay, well, what about the efficiency? Because the thrust by itself is only useful if it's not going to destroy your battery, right? So let's go ahead and um, look at the thrust. So just like the um, thrust data, the efficiency data is also, again, a function. It changes as a you know, as a function of throttle percent. And so we do the same thing that we just did, you know, with the thrust data, and we run the principal component analysis on it. And 
Let's make that a little bigger. Let's run, just print this again. So if, if we look at it, so there's the mean function, and then there's a couple of additional functions. And in the efficiency, most of it's, again, explained by that first principal component. But we can see that there's actually a fair amount still ex also explained by the second principal component. And so maybe you want to consider that when you're really getting that into the details of the analysis. If we look at these pr principal components, the first one's not surprisingly like with the thrust data. It's a big gain function. And so this one just tells you overall, is this um, a not very efficient motor or is it an efficient motor? And then um, if we plot our actual efficiency curves, you can see that this really explains just about all of it. It doesn't explain quite all of the diff all of the variation. And so you do, you could consider, you know, if you really wanted to dig into the details of this, the second principal component. And the second principal component, what it describes is this bias. It describes the bias of efficiency down low versus up high. So there's this trade-off where you can have some motors, um, like these, the ones that will score high in the second principal component, that relatively speaking will do well at higher throttles versus uh, lower throttles. In terms of then um, going ahead and, and looking at this data, we can plot this out now just like we did for the thrust data. And so now we see some differences, right? Because, you know, our Amax motor on the thrust was a little bit below the average. And now look, it's up above. And some of these motors that were really pretty disappointing on thrust were not or below what we would really want to see for thrust. Now the efficiency really comes into play with like the beta FPV motor and the HGLRC. So clearly there's some trade-off there of efficiency versus thrust. And um, interestingly though, look at these two motors. So the FPV cycle motors, that produced a giant GABA thrust, but it also has a huge, you know, loss of efficiency. Unicorn motor here, happy model, not that bad on efficiency. Considering how high it was on the thrust, the efficiency is really not all that bad. Um, but this is a little bit hard now to interpret because now you get these two things and there's a trade-off and it's like, well, what do you do with that? Um, my solution to that was to go ahead and um, plot these and run just a linear regression. So if we run a model of saying, um, how does how does the um, efficiency change as a function of the thrust, we can draw a straight line through that. And this says, and this is that relationship, there's a trade-off here. So if you want high thrust, you just have to skip, um, accept that you're going to lose some efficiency. Or if you want a lot of efficiency, you're going to have to accept kind of a lower thrust. But then what we want to do is wherever we are in this range, we want to be able to pick out the motors that are going to be the winners versus the losers. And the way you say that is the, the motors that are above the curve, you know, above the regression, those are going to be your winners. And the ones that are below the regression are going to be the losers. And so what we can do is we can um, get a number from this called, it's just the residual. It's literally the residual difference between the prediction, which is the line, and the actual observed value. So this difference here, so if you take this value minus that, that's the residual. And so what we want to look for is our high residual motors are going to be um, the winners when we're thinking about this thrust versus efficiency um, trade-off. And so now I think things get really interesting here because I don't think we can necessarily declare total winners here, but we can certainly throw out some definite losers. And so one of those that jumps out, and this actually really, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see this, even though I'm, I feel bad for gnarly, I'm like, look guys, I'm not trying to pick on you, but this motor I thought was really terrible in the air. It just seemed like it didn't have much power, and yet it was sucking down the, 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 the amps. It was like, it was just draining batteries, and it's like, well, what's going on with this motor? And sure enough, our thrust testing is, is supporting that idea because look this really underperforms for the amount of thrust you get you don't get a whole lot of efficiency and vice versa on the other hand um, where's our check out our unicorn mode over here it says happy model 12 or 3 ton of thrust yet still very good you know this is above the curve and some of these motors you know for example if you just wanted to tr fly long range or really just focus not on performance but going long range you could actually look at this, um, like HDLRC motors, 1103. You could also look at the beta FPV motor here. Again, these these two, if you just wanted to get like the most efficiency and you're just cruising, you're not worried about like um, how well your PID can control the motors or being able to punch out and do aerobatics, those might be great choices. Not choices that I'm interested in personally, but 
it could be a great choice for you. Our benchmark motor, AMAX, this looks pretty good. You know, it's above the average. And then there's some other motors in here that are still kind of sticking around and hanging around and, and might be actually good motors that are starting to, you didn't really notice them before. For example, this GEP RC1202 motor in 8000 kV, you didn't really notice it before, but here it is. You know, it's above, it's above the curve and it's got a positive residual. So that starts to become an interesting motor. Um, another motor that becomes kind of interesting, um, Apex motor, it's, you know, it's not terrible, maybe a little, little bit below, but you're not giving up that much with it. And then, unfortunately for me, uh, this flywheel motor, so I bought five, you know, I was really hoping this motor would be good, and it's just not. Um, another loser in this regard is that Power Drone Hyperlight motor with 12,600 kV. That's just way too much kV for 2S, and, and sure enough, it's going to be a loser here. Um, another motor that doesn't quite live up to it is going to be this Jing 12 to 2 um, 8,000 kV. And what's kind of interesting here is if we look at these motors are actually super similar, the 1103 versus 1202, but when we get into kind of the ratios and stuff, the 1103 does a little bit better than the 1202. It basically gives you a little bit more thrust without giving up the efficiency, and the 1202 just gives up a little bit too much efficiency. And interestingly enough, I, I kind of felt that in the air, these 1202 motors, I liked them, but they didn't quite have the, the thrust you would expect for the amount of amps that they were drawing. Not nearly as bad as the um, the gnarly motor, but anyways. So with this video, um, I'm going to stop here because um, I will, the next video we're going to go into the response curves and kind of putting it all together. But the first time I first like 10 times recorded this, I went way too far. I went like, I think like 40 minutes on it and it's just too long. So I'm going to do a pause here. Um, but to sum up what we're seeing so far in terms of our thrust uh, and efficiency data, the motors that are looking interesting to me is, you know, this our Emax motor looks pretty good. Um, this Apex motor 1202 also looks kind of interesting. Unfortunately, these Bard and the Beta FPV motors, these just don't have enough thrust, I think. Um, still in the running here, our brother Hobby motor um, is looking okay. Flywheel motor, unfortunately, it doesn't make the cut. We'll still talk about it further, but it just, it's not going to do what we need it to do. Uh, this FPV cycle motor um, stays kind of interesting. Also interesting, get bar C1202 in 8,000 and 10,000 kV. Gnarly motor, um, sorry gnarly, this 1203 just was not a good motor and it's discontinued, so good. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Our unicorn here, the happy model. Uh, HGLRC motor, you know, it, if efficiency was your thing, maybe this motor also it's inexpensive, but it uh, just doesn't quite have enough thrust to where I'm interested in it. The Mamba motor, it's it's hanging out here, this uh, Diatom uh, Mamba 1103. Um, it could be good. Uh, the Hyperlay motor doesn't quite make it. My Cheater motor, it's still in the mix. And then the Xing 1103 is still in the mix. 1202, eh, kind of stillish in the mix. But, all right, um, that's it for this video. Um, check out the next one. Till next time, cheers.